uh, with us. It's a member of Parliament for the Ningbo Prapram constituency. Appreciate your time, Honorable. Thank you for joining us here on TV3 live right now. The NPP Congress have decided to vacate Parliament, awaiting the arrival of the Speaker, because they say they are still in the majority because of the ruling by, by the Supreme Court. Is that one that, as a caucus, you are going to, as it were, accept? Or the expectations of the Speaker would be to give a final determination? Well, the MPP has shown us the respect of the Speaker. If the MPP is saying that the Speaker should come and sit in the chair before they come in, that shows us the respect. I, either by parliamentary standing or customary law, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't expect the Speaker to come and sit in the chair before you walk in. By all parliamentary procedure anywhere in the world, members of parliament are seated and we rise for the speaker and the base to arrive. Right now, the MPP minority group in parliament is trying to tell us that they are bigger than the base of parliament, that they are bigger than the speaker of parliament. So the speaker should come and sit before they come. What's this respect? But I mean, it, it, it speaks to the arrogance of the arrogance that has been clouded their sense of judgment. For us, we are telling our minds where the majority of us are so declared. Nothing has changed since then. The notices of course have been put out, and we are going to continue with the ruling of this. Well, let's say the Supreme Court has said otherwise. The Supreme Court doesn't determine the business of the House. The business of the House is not, is not under the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Have you seen the Supreme Court tax directive to the executive, to a minister of state or the president? Have you seen the Chief Justice sit the panel and but even when somebody was abusing the executive instruments during COVID? Did you see the Supreme Court issue a directive? But Sebi, Sebi, as they say, he, back when they knew him, so he's the one they would, they would disrespect. And I think Parliament itself has contributed to this. Why is that? Because Parliament has sat on and allowed the judiciary and the executive to not the right for too long. In the case of the LGBT bill, Parliament is enjoined by the Constitution, Article 1067, to transmit a bill that is passed by this House straight to Parliament. There is no injunction. So why is Parliament not transmitting the bill? Why has the Speaker not insisted on transmitting the bill? And I stood in the floor that I said, no, Mr. Speaker. I said, Mr. Speaker, if the President has caused the Secretary to write a cease and desist warning to you, cause the clerk to also write a cease and desist to the, to the President, that you will not entertain any business. It's quid pro quo. But because we bent over backwards for that. When you give, when you give people an inch, they will take a bath. And that's why today, because we have allowed them to do the things they've done, they've become so emboldened that they think it is within their rights to be able to determine to Parliament what we should have. To the extent that Captain Predator wrote that letter saying the Parliament don't transmit this bill because there are cases in court, you were expecting that the Speaker would reciprocate that same action? Absolutely, because there's no injunction. Has to speak. Is that an injunction against Parliament? No. Is that an injunction against Parliament? It's been eight months in the Parliament. Is that an injunction? No. So why, have, why has Parliament not exerted its authority? And because Parliament has failed to exert its authority, Parliament is doing it. That's why anybody judges engaged in whatever activism would take the kind of action that they take. But Parliament will not be subject to the judicial Well, if you listen to the leader of the MPP caucus, the reason why they decided to resort to the Supreme Court, some of challenged the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court in this matter. But he says that to the extent that the, the Speaker communicated in the manner in which they did, he overstepped his bounds. It cannot be the case that the Speaker can sound as though he is interpreting the Constitution and say that he is only applying the details of the Constitution, not to the 97 one The Speaker did not seek to interpret the Constitution, only about by the the constitution and joined the speaker to announce the vacancy of the seat when when same is occasion and the 97 gives you the basis on which that vacancy can occasion the death of a member of parliament so if that has, has been occasion and there's evidence of same from the electoral commission and the speaker communicating what is what is the supreme court in that case in fact the supreme court has that is all questions and answers because the ruling the supreme court gave is completely different from the case of the Kenya took a case on Monday, last week Monday, to the court. There's an injunction on the speaker for passing a determination on the status of the court. The Supreme Court police sat on Friday. Meanwhile, the speaker had made the determination on Thursday. So if the speaker had determined on Thursday already the matter before the Supreme Court, what was the Supreme Court ruling on? What have they ruled on? Except they chose to set down questions and answer their questions. So now the Supreme Court is the applicant in the case, has been the judge in the case. It can't be judged, you can 
and everything in there. It's absolutely you know, the Supreme Court can be a big well, we saw Anamal of going to be a piece as well at the majority side with you. See that there. How's it going to end? When, when they all they have no business there. And let's let's be clear. The issue of majority and minority in this party was determined by Speaker Babu, not by the court. And that's why I keep saying that the most unintelligent commentary I have heard, the most unintelligent comment I've heard so far in this whole conversation is what Mamu Baumia said. When he says that if the NDC wants a majority, he should go to the polls. The polls, the majority he claims they have the biggest at the polls. At the polls, they did not get 137. The NDC got 137. So, where did they get their majority? And those who remember, in January 2021, the speaker was not calling them the majority for us. He was calling them the MPP group and calling us the NDC group. And so, the speaker had to tell me that, okay, upon the CMS application, we had two routes to take. Either say that every time voting was going to occur, he would count his Yaman's votes depending on where he votes, and that would be it. Or he would take the route to where he decided to add a Yaman number to guess to make them the majority. And so it was a ruling from Mr. Speaker that made the MVP 137 become the majority with Kimbali. It wasn't the folks. So, but what does he want to say? And that's why I said the most unintelligent argument. Because what he is asking for, that he is well he claims he's defending. He didn't win at the polls. At the polls, he got 137, got 137. That's not about majority. I mean, but I would understand if Dr. Palmer does not know that 137 is equal to 137, is the reason why our economy is in a mess. Talk about Andres Yama. Now that the effect of the speaker's decision as communicated yes. on Thursday is no more the second deputy. Yes, we will elect the second deputy. You're going to elect the second deputy. We will elect the second deputy. Conversations have started. Started already? I believe we're we we done with that conversation already. We're when done speaker with comes, we'll notify him about You're done with the conversation of yes. who is going to be second yes. deputy speaker? Yes. Yes. You want to give us an indication? No. We'll do that on the floor. Yeah. You're going to announce who the second deputy speaker is today? It's, it's a course of natural action. Parliament must have two deputy speakers. One from the, the, the first deputy from the, the minority group and the second from the majority group. And that's going to be from you, the NDC? Definitely. Definitely. If they want to, you can put it to a vote. You don't have a problem.